Welcome back guys to Code with Josh. You guessed it, I'm Josh. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about loops in Python and why we use them. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button. And if you're looking for help through your programming journey, you're in the right place. I'm gonna take all that complex tech jargon, break it down to a more enjoyable tone for you to understand. And unlike those other programming videos that are highly informational, they're great. They are so boring. And this is supposed to be a little bit different. If you are looking for a free resource to help you get started on your programming journey, first link in the description. I made you guys your very own free Python cheat sheet guide specifically for beginners. And this is the same guide that I give all my students on their first day of class. So be sure to check it out in the link below. Loops, they're the bread and butter of programming. They're what make the computer do the work for us. Now in Python, we have two types of loops. We have the while loop and the for loop. But first, I wanna talk about the while loop. Literally, the while loop is going to repeat while something is true. If it becomes false, our loop stops. Let's take a look at how we can structure this while loop. As I mentioned, the while loop is going to repeat while something is true. It quits when that becomes false. So our syntax, our language, looks like this. We have our special while operator in Python. While this is true, all this code inside here is going to keep running over and over and over again. That's a loop, it just repeats, right? When the loop becomes false, when this becomes false, this is the first line of code that's gonna run when the loop ends or the loop breaks. Imagine this is our loop. So take a read, if you wanna pause the video, I have an example description for you right there. Before my loop runs, I'm asked for an input, a password. So I'm gonna enter a password. I have a while loop. And while my input is not equal to this password, my loop is gonna repeat. So my loop will always repeat until I enter the correct password. In this example, the correct password is password123. Don't make that your password. Please don't make that your password. That's awful. Every time I enter the wrong password, it's gonna print. You entered the wrong password, and then it's gonna ask me for input again. This input is the same variable. Just our hint is different. It's gonna say try again. When I get the correct password, it's gonna say welcome to your account. So imagine, the first time I enter my password, I enter Rambo321 exclamation point. It's gonna print, you entered the wrong password. Try again. This time I try again and I enter password123. It's gonna say welcome to your account. It doesn't matter. If you enter 100 wrong passwords, this loop is going to repeat 100 times. If you enter the correct password the first time, this loop just repeats a single time. Pretty cool. My last point here is we can use a counter with a loop. Now, a long story short, a counter is literally a variable, and this variable holds a number. Every time your loop loops, this counter variable is gonna increase by one or decrease by one. The job of a counter variable is to count. So here I have an input test answer, and then I have a variable try equals one. While my input is not C, that means C is the correct answer. My loop is gonna run. Every time it runs, try is being increased by one. And I'm gonna print wrong answer, try again. When I finally get the correct answer, the first thing that's gonna print is how many tries it took me. If it took me 
three tries, it's going to print, it took you three tries to get what you wanted. Right, so think about how we can use counter variables to our advantage. All right, it's time to head over into VS Code, and let's try two of these while loop examples over there. Okay, so here we are. Let's, let's just make the first one. So the first while loop example that I want to make here is I'm going to say, uh, let's say name equals input, and let's say enter your name. All right, and I'm, I'm going to make a loop, and I'm going to say while my name is not equal to Josh, right, because that's me. I'm going to print, let's say you are not the right person. And I want to try again. We need a way to end the loop or break the loop. If we don't have a way to end the loop, we are going to get an infinite loop. And that is the last thing we want. If we're using an input in our expression, the easiest way to end the loop is just copy your input and put it as the last line of the loop. This way, it's going to run every single time. The first thing I want to say on the outside is say, hey, Josh, let's run my code. There we are, enter name, Bob, try again. Jane, try again. Josh, oh, hey, Josh. That's pretty cool, all right. Let me turn that off or just, yeah, I'll turn that off. And let's try another one, okay? So let's try uh, guess. And let's say guess is our input. This is the example I saw on the slide. Let's say enter answer. And let's have a counter. Let's say i equals 1. While my guess is not equal to a, then i, I want to add 1 to, and I'm going to say try again, just like I did in the first example. So here, try again. When we are done, I'm going to say guesses and let's say I. When I run the code, I'm going to enter an answer. Let's enter a few things. Let's say B, C, or that's a V, A. Okay, it took me three guesses. That's true. One, two, three. That's pretty awesome. But if we get it correct on the first try, A, you can see that it took me one guess. Well, there you have it, folks, the while loop. Now, the while loop is like a kid on a sugar rush. <laughs> That's right, we don't want that, right? Because it just goes and goes and goes, right? It's a lot of energy. The other type of loop we have is the for loop. And the for loop is like a well-behaved child because it's only going to run, 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 run as many times as you specifically tell it to. And the objective of a for loop is to iterate through a sequence. The job of a for loop is to go through a data type. We can go through a string. We can go through a list, as well as many other data structures. Let's take a look at what I mean. Here we are in the for loop structure. Now, our Python syntax is the word for and in. Element is like a local variable that we can use inside the for loop. So for every element in this sequence. Now the sequence is what you're searching through. You could be searching through a string, a variable, a list, a dictionary, right? So imagine I have a variable called name, and name equals James. Each letter in the variable James is one element. One, two, three, four, five. There are five elements. For every element in my string. Let me break it down one further. I love literal translations, because that's how I understand programming. This is a literal translation. Look at this. We had for every element, what this means is literally for every element in my variable. I want to do something with that. So this is literally going to go J, A, M, E, S. 
And every time it gets to one of those elements, it can do something with that individual element. Now, I have an input, just like before, so we can enter a username. But then I also have a string of invalid characters. These characters are not allowed in the username. So, I could enter a username, like you can see here is the username I have entered in the example. Josh, hashtag, one, two, three. For every letter in my username Josh, if the current letter is in the variable invalid, then I can print, this character is not allowed, and I wanna print that letter. So my loop is gonna run J, O, S, H, O, boom. It gets to this hashtag. Hashtag is in my string invalid. Right, so I can use the for loop to go through something. That's really amazing, and that makes the for loop super powerful. Let's head back to VS Code, and I'll give you two quick examples. All right, here we are in VS Code. Let's, let's make an input, okay? And let's say like a phone number. This is gonna be an input, and we can say enter a phone number. And I'm gonna do this a bit backwards. Let's say, let's create a variable called valid, right? And what is a valid phone number? Well, it could be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and also a plus I could use in that. So I'm gonna enter a phone number and I wanna make sure that the phone number I enter is also in my variable valid. So for every number in my phone number, if the current number is not in my variable valid, then I want to print this is not a number. And I'm going to print that number. The name of this element can be anything. The name of this element can be anything, but it's a good idea to give it a name that relates to what you're searching through. Like, I'm searching through a phone number. I'm not gonna say airplane. That makes no sense at all. Number, yeah, that makes sense. You can name it anything. It's like a variable. If I run my code, let's first enter a wrong phone number. So like, 1258A, enter. Oh, this is not a number, and it says A. Okay, cool. If I run it again, and I say, I don't know, this, enter, nothing happens, right? That's because all of these are numbers. That's great. All right, let's check out one more, more advanced example if you are new to Python. Let's say I have a list of ages. Let's say uh, 14, let's say 21, 45, 65, 71, 22, and 34. I wanna go through and I wanna check to make sure these are even numbers. If it's an even number, let's uh, print off that current number, right? So let's say for every age in my list ages. If the current age is divisible by two, that's equal to zero. So if the remainder of that number, when it's divided by two, is zero, that means it's an even number. So I'm gonna like print like even, and let's print that age. So let's run it, watch what happens. Even, 14, 22, and 34. If you look at the list, those are the only even numbers. That is really cool. So there you have it, folks. You've been introduced to the two loops in Python. We have the while loop and the for loop, and those are two key important things in a programmer's arsenal. So use them, guys. Experiment a little bit. And if you downloaded the cheat sheet that I provided in the description, use that to program a few of your own things, right? Remember, programming should be fun. So try and make it fun.
Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video because I know I did, um, and I'm excited to see you guys in another episode, so stay tuned for more, and hit that subscribe button for more content. I'll see you guys in my next video of Code with Josh.